all right so people are still joining in though but we will start discussion of what we are going to do today all right so as you know and aware about that we are done with the uh, motion in 1d chapter all right so in motion 1d uh, we have learned many aspects of the motion right but whatever we have learned everything was happening in a straight line okay the velocity displacement acceleration everything was in one straight line all right so now we are shifting our focus on motions which are not actually in a straight line all right so if motion doesn't happen in a straight line then how you will deal with it that is what we are going to learn next fine now who all have done the last homework type in assignment who all are completed with the assignments just just i want to check before i proceed are you guys done which one the previous class there was no assignment okay last to last class there were two assignments okay so can i ha oh ho oh, oh. ho okay so can i do one thing like uh, after the today's class i can send the assignment on the um, on your whatsapp group for calculus on motion in 1d use of calculus in the motion in 1d and do that right so i'll send it across i'll send two assignment don't start doing the second one before doing the first one because the second one may be one level up okay now how many of you uh, in your schools uts do uts have already started or just about to start going on which school anika rnr sadhana in nafal all right starting on monday begin this monday all right so i have heard that some of you got your marks already like in nps hsr is where i have heard you guys have already got the marks so can do you do you mind telling me the marks which you got physics physics marks you got right in nps hsr how much you got okay other section got it and nowhere else you got your marks no other school okay all right so probably i'll ask that in the next class all right next week anyways so uh, looks like we have good number of people joined in all right okay okay fine so we are going to start the next chapter motion in a plane motion in a plane is about analyzing the movement analyzing the movement of an object in a plane right so the movement can happen in a straight line right it goes straight like this or it can it can take a curved path right for example for example if uh, if i just draw a path like this right if i draw a path like this is this motion in 1d what do you think is this motion in 1d when i draw like this this is not motion in 1d right this is not motion in a straight line motion in 1d motion in a straight line same thing so what we can call this is now do you all agree that no matter how i draw the line no matter however it is whatever line i draw it will be in the plane of the screen only screen is a plane on that plane only every line will lie whether it is a curved line or straight line it will lie in this plane only all of you agree right so motion in 2d is about motion in 2d is about movement of an object which is taking a curved path 
Reading it, it is not a straight line path. It's a curved path. Fine. It is a study of the curved path, which is lying in a single plane. All right. Now, we all of us see the movement of various things around us. So, can you recognize few of the uh, situation in which an object while moving can take a curved path, which you see around yourself? Anyone? When a movement, when an object is moving, it can take a curved path. Any example? Good. When you kick a football, what will happen? It will take a curved path like this. Right? When you drop a basketball, it goes like this, goes inside the basket and drops off. Right? Many such things. And what about the circular motion? Is circular motion the best example of the curved motion or not? What do you think? Right? So, circular motion is also the uh, motion in a plane. So, in this chapter, in this chapter, we are going to take these few well-known examples and understand how to analyze the movement in a plane. Okay. So, I, I hope that sets the context properly that why we are studying this chapter. All right. This chapter will take lesser time compared to motion in 1D because in motion in one dimension, we also got introduced to what is displacement, what is velocity, what is acceleration and things like that, right? So whatever introduction of velocity, acceleration and everything was there in motion 1D, same thing is true here also. So nothing is going to change, right? We are just going to talk about few examples here, all right? Now, now comes the main issue when we study things that are moving in a plane. All right, then the problem is that we cannot study it in a very simplified manner. What do I mean by simplified manner? For example, when let's say velocity was going like this and acceleration was in opposite direction, right? How we took care of the directions? Velocity, if I take positive, acceleration becomes what? If velocity is positive, acceleration is? How I take care of the directions? Do you all remember we used sign for the directions? All of you remember or not? Positive sign, negative sign, we use those symbols for the directions. All right. But what if velocity is this way, but acceleration is making 30 degree with it? Can I use the sign to take care of the directions? Can I do that? If velocity is this way, acceleration makes 30 degree to the velocity. I cannot use the plus or minus sign for the directions. Are you getting it? Right? So using plus or minus sign to take care of the direction is an oversimplified version of use of vectors, which doesn't work when the velocity and acceleration, they are not in one straight line. Okay, so we cannot study motion in a plane by using oversimplified version of vector. We need to actually learn how vector works. All right. And that is what we'll do in today's session. So today's session, mostly we are going to talk about the mathematical part of the uh, ma mathematical tool, which is called vectors, which will help us analyze all the movement. So, because again, we cannot use plus or minus sign in motion in 2D to take care of the direction. We have to use vectors directly. Okay. So, all right. Somebody is asking, can you give an example where velocity and acceleration are not in the same direction? All right. Can anybody answer this question where velocity and acceleration are not in the same direction? There is some angle between them. Anyone wants to answer? Okay. Correct. Others? A anybody else? Right. Many things are there, right? So, for example, for example, you throw, 
you throw a ball ball will take this kind of path ball goes up and down like this this is the velocity direction in which the ball is moving but the only force is gravity which is creating acceleration vertically downwards acceleration is down and velocity keeps changing its direction does it clear sadhna velocity keeps changing its direction but only force applied is gravity and mg is equal to mass m acceleration so acceleration is g in the direction of uh, the gravity force so acceleration is always vertically down all right is there an, anyone here from nafl attending the today's class but i think you have the chemistry class right in nps rajajinagar you have a chemistry class going on there those who are from nafl right now attending here the class but anyways no no the reminder was sent you recently joined sadhna is it when did you join when did you join date of joining as in one or two days before only okay no problem you attend the this are you attend this session anyways because you have not done this one also so after the class gets over please get in touch with me okay clear all right everyone let us get going with vectors all right last session it was heavily loaded with the calculus today's session it is loaded with vectors okay so after today's session i may forget that i am a physics teacher only teaching mathematics for two classes now how many of you were there by the way in the bridge program when i was teaching vectors how many of you were there in the bridge program many of you were there oh all right so those who have already attended the vectors with me probably it is a good revision all right some of you have already watched the recordings also not a problem let us see if i can find something new for you anyways so all of you you know in units and measurement chapter we discussed what we discussed that in physics there are various quantities right there are so many quantities and for every quantity we measure differently we measure mass differently we measure length different differently time differently okay so there are different different ways we measure different different things fine and these are what these are quantities mass is a quantity that is the reason why you have to put a number to it right you have to put a number that it is number 5 5 kg it is all right so likewise in physics there are so many quantities you can keep on listing down for example let me list down couple of them you you can also help me mass is there length is there time everyone force acceleration velocity temperature current energy anything else displacement momentum torque distance okay flux what else charge current is written current is written already anything else anything else comes in your mind that's it there's so many actually there is angle angular velocity angular momentum there's so many others okay so let's not uh, be comprehensive here just that i am telling you that there are so many 
things in physics for which you need to put a number to it volume is also one okay so there are few things if you just tell a number that is sufficient let's say mass length time if i tell you the time is 2 seconds that is good enough entire information is conveyed all right the mass is 5 kg sufficient nothing else you have to tell all right but if i tell you velocity is 5 meter per second is that sufficient information what do you think will that help you to analyze where the object be after some time if i tell you velocity is something constant velocity only yes constant velocity i i tell you the velocity is 2 meter per second after 2 seconds where the object will be it'll say 2 into 2 4 meters but i am asking you where exactly it will be you cannot tell why because i am not telling you i am not telling you which direction that object is moving okay it is like you have started from your home let us say and you are going with a speed of 10 meter per second you are going with 10 meter per second and i am asking you how much time it will take for you to reach the school what if you are not going towards the school you are probably going to a mall right in the opposite direction you are moving so you i cannot find out until is you tell me that i am moving in that direction right if i tell you for, let, let's talk about the displacement now if i tell you that uh, there is a treasure 2 uh, kilometers from where you are sitting will you be able to find out will you be able to find out if i just tell you it is at 2 km distance away from where you are sitting is it sufficient information for you to find out where the treasure is what do you think not sufficient you need to know exactly which direction it is in right so there are many quantities in physics there are many quantities in physics for which just telling the magnitude is not sufficient okay just telling a number is not sufficient we have to also find out the direction of it all right so when i am quantifying something right when i am putting some number against a physics quantity many times i have to tell the direction also right many a times uh, somebody might be asking directions from you when uh, that person might be going somewhere from one place to the other place how you tell you tell that go straight take second left then go for 2 km forward take uh, take the uh, right turn after that like that you tell the directions right so many times what happens is we try to tell the direction by using words we try to explain the direction okay we are explaining the direction by telling that okay you have to take a right turn then take a left turn and things like that but still we are not quantifying the direction the quant it is like you are telling okay mass is very heavy time is very large force is very less that kind of thing we are doing when we are explaining the direction by using english so we need to quantify it by using some mathematics so that we can analyze it further okay otherwise we'll just know the direction what is the what will happen after you know the direction will you be able to do the analysis of that situation that is possible only when you mathematically put some value to it okay and that's the reason why we are learning vectors okay so vectors is as big a universe as big the scalars are for let me go to this what i am telling you is that till now our entire focus was on scalars okay we only focused on the scalar quantities mass length time charge and all that fine since our childhood grade 1 or 2 onwards 
we were learning about the numbers how to uh, i mean how you write number 1 how you write 2 then uh, how to add the two numbers how to multiply the two numbers how to divide the two numbers everything that we have learned till now was related to scalars numbers all right now i am telling you that there is another universe that exists this is one universe this is another universe okay this is a scalar and this is vector they are different from each other all right so just like as a kid when we were learning about the scalars we never assumed anything we learn everything from scratch how you add how you multiply and stuff like that same way exactly same way we need to learn about the vectors we need to learn what is a vector how to write the vector how to add the vectors how to multiply the vectors right so whatever we have learned for the scalars may not be directly used for the vectors so never try to utilize whatever you have learned in scalars don't try to think that everything that you learn is scalars is directly applicable to the vectors so you need to learn it from the scratch how to add multiply and stuff like that so that is the reason why in today's session we are going to learn about these vectors from scratch as if we are kid all right so that is something which you should keep in your mind all right now here you can see some of the quantities which are scalar quantities mass volume distance all of these they do not require any sense of directions in it so you guys are uh, making your notes or not when i am when i am showing something on here you guys make notes or not okay so you don't need to write this entire thing but at least few of these things better you write down okay few of these things you write down all right now let us move forward so you need to behave or you need to treat as if you don't know anything about the vectors then only you will learn the most okay now vector is a quantity which should tell you the direction okay shouldn't it also tell the magnitude what do you think if i if i ask you about the velocity will you just tell the direction no will you just tell the magnitude no you have to tell both right you have to tell both so it will have both direction as well as the magnitude okay now since it has both direction and magnitude there should be a way to represent it a way to represent it all right so since it has a sense of direction we can represent it geometrically also geometrically we can represent in one way and algebraically we can represent it in another way okay broadly what i am trying to say is what i am trying to say is that vectors broadly the analysis of the vectors can be divided into two parts geometric analysis and algebraic analysis okay i think algebraic spelling is incorrect right there is a spelling mistake can anybody help what is this god jashan knows oh is it only me doesn't know oh algebraic okay all right so uh, vectors you can see that broadly divided into two parts geometrical analysis and algebraic analysis all right so these uh, things are slightly disjoint from each other so we are going to study about the geometrical analysis first so before studying the geometrical analysis we need to first understand how you can geometrically represent a vector all right you can represent in in any which way which is making sense right you can represent it like this you can say that the tip 
represents the direction of the vector and the area of this triangle represents the magnitude of the vector but this will have its own complications all right so what is the easiest way to represent a vector can anybody highlight good so you can represent a vector by using an arrow this is an arrow all right an arrow why because arrow is a best way to tell the direction by using the head and the length of the arrow can represent the magnitude getting it so geometrically vectors it is not that god has come from the sky and told us that you know that uh, this is how the vector should be it is a human creation we have created it so you can assume anything so humans when they create they look for the comfort and the ease so that's the reason why we all have agreed that easily you can represent a vector by using an arrow so we cannot debate upon that why arrow is used why not this why not that you can use anything that makes sense all right so when we represent it like a like an arrow the length represented as the magnitude and the head represented by the direction okay this keep in your mind clear anybody has any doubt any doubt anybody has no doubts now tell me if i move this vector i just um duplicate it now if i take this vector move parallel to itself and i move it over there i have moved this vector over there has the direction changed when i move this vector over there has the direction changed direction is still on the right hand side direction is same has a length changed has a length changed length also is not changed so so my dear friends we can move the vector parallel to itself without affecting its value so write down a vector vector can be moved parallel to itself without affecting its value okay it doesn't get affected it remains the same got it i hope this is now is, is this something unique to vectors only what do you think does this is this something something which is completely new is it it's not something completely new for example let's say you write number 3 here you move this number 3 from here to there it will still remains 3 okay it still remains 3 in fact if you rotate this 3 little bit does it still remain 3 or not even if you have rotated does it remain 3 it remains 3 only okay that doesn't change but then if you rotate this vector a bit like that length is same has the vector changed has the vector changed right vector has changed because the direction is changed direction is an integral part of the vectors all right so direction is changed vector is changed so this is not something unique only to the vector and in fact you cannot rotate the vector but you can move it parallel to itself clear i hope these things are very very clear okay now always keep in mind we are talking about the geometrical analysis algebraic analysis we will do later we will not do it right now we are just focusing on the geometrical part of it all right remember that now when it comes to a variable which is a scalar variable 
we use letters like x y z all of us remember or not in equation like 3x plus 2y is equal to 6 like that x y and z they are variables right they are they are what variable they are scalar variables they are scalar variable similarly a variable in a vector can also be used can also be represented by letters only but when you write a letter put a bar also on top of it like this when you write like that put a bar at the top it means that you are talking about a vector variable all right many books they will represent it like that also it is same it is one and the same thing all right so these are the few things that are assumed okay every time any story starts with certain assumption right assume that there is a king uh, which is ruling the country at this time and then that is how the story starts similarly the story of vector starts from here all of the assumptions that we have made is here only okay now we can talk about using vector to analyze something or how you add how you multiply and stuff like that anybody has any doubts till now type in quick no doubts okay since there are no doubts i will move forward so remember whatever i am scribbling that will be erased all right so you need to keep writing that at least so same thing which we were talking about here vector quantities are the quantities which have direction as well as magnitude now this is just an explanation when you add this to it it become definition this is also an important part of any vector a vector must follow vector law of addition and subtraction okay now what it is what it is we are going to discuss a little later but it is a law which every vector must follow okay i'll just give you a brief of it for example let's say let's say you have this a box you apply two newton from this side and two newton from the opposite side total force is how much everyone what is the total force here zero why zero why not four why not four because you are considering the direction also yes or no because you are considering the direction also all of us agree to that right because we are considering the direction that is why we are saying it is zero now imagine like this two ampere current coming from here two ampere current coming from there how much current will go there what current will go there everyone the 4 ampere 4 ampere so current has current has the direction and magnitude right it is coming from the left coming from the right it has a direction as well as the magnitude but it doesn't behave like a vector when you add it right that is the reason why current despite having magnitude and direction is not a vector quantity all right sir so is it a scalar you can call it a tensor quantity okay but then yes for the for our purpose of grade 11th and 12th you can treat it like a scalar but you have to take care of the direction right you need it is not a completely a scalar quantity got it sir because ncert had a question which was like uh, which of the following are vectors of scalar quantities and in that uh, current was given as a right answer that's why i was asking current was given as a scalar quantity yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. right so then you that is what i'm telling you you need to mark it as a scalar for your school purposes but then when you are uh, analyzing something very complex circuit you need to know the direction or not or yes, just yes. right you need to know it from which direction current is coming in 
so the treatment of the vector is little different than all the scalar quantities okay but then if it comes in your school exam you write it like a scalar okay yeah, now awesome. this is what we have already discussed that a vector will have a head it will have a tail it the magnitude will be the length and direction is represented by the head okay this we already discussed now these are the some things these are something that you need to copy down okay so everyone copy it down there there is something called as unit vector as the name suggest as the name suggest unit vector will we have this for the test sunday test you talking about sunday's test sunday's test probably not but the test after that which will be next sunday then it will come every sunday you have test on every sunday okay surprise surprise you will be having uh, you have the four pattern test right you have a ct test you have a j main test j advanced and neat test right if you want to write everything neat ct j main j advanced then every sunday there is a test because four weeks there will be a test but if you want to only focus on ct then only once in a month the test will happen understood all right unit vector as a name suggest it has only the direction but magnitude is one all right magnitude is only one now tell me now tell me have you ever uh, you know defined something as a uh, one unit and that was very useful has it ever happened is it useful to define one unit of anything like correct like mass like mass we defined 1 kg right once you define what is 1 then you can find out what is 2 what is 3 what is 2.5 what is 3.5 times is it clear so that is the reason why defining what is a unit vector is important although it is very easy but still we specify it all right now there is something called as null vector all right null vector is an analogous to zero for the scalar fine so like i told you the scalar the universe is different the vector the universe is different so we cannot say that uh nothing of a vector is zero because when you say zero it implies that you are talking about a scalar quantity although it is zero only but we name it as null vector all right null vector is a vector having zero magnitude and no direction just like zero of a scalar okay then equal mag vectors e when i say this vector is equal to that vector they are not just equal in the magnitude they are also equal in the direction all right just like if this is one vector this is the other vector they can never be equal although their magnitudes may be equal but their directions are different they can never be equal all right there can be vectors which we can call it a parallel vectors two vectors like this they are parallel to each other different magnitude but parallel okay now these last two things are not as important these are the obvious things but defining unit vector and null vector is important somebody is saying parallel vectors are equal vectors is it correct what do you think others are parallel vectors the equal vectors they need not be right they can be of different different lengths one is just uh, only if they are of same magnitude correct good so if two vectors having the same magnitude same direction that means they are parallel to each other then only they are equal all right 
let me go to the next okay the, these are like dictionary of vectors it is good to know these things beforehand itself anti parallel what do you think parallel vectors are parallel vectors they are in the same direction so anti of anything is in opposite direction they are in opposite direction completely opposite so one vector is in right hand side let's say sorry left hand side the other vector will be in which direction it will be in that direction so these two vectors are in opposite directions all right now does it need to be equal magnitude need not be just about the direction when i say when i say one vector is negative of the other we have already learned in the motion 1d if velocity vector this way acceleration vector that way then one is negative of the other right we take care of the direction with the negative sign all right okay somebody is asking why both negative and anti parallel they mean the same right no when i say negative vector when i say a is equal to negative of b what does it imply it implies that vector a this way and vector b that way and not only just about the directions their magnitudes are also equal got it pratik this is a and this will be minus b not minus b this is b only okay a is equal to negative of b all right anti parallel just means one is in opposite direction all right concurrent coplanar orthogonal if i hide the definition let's say if i don't show you these things right what what do you think concurrent should be what do you think concurrent should be everyone you can speak up also concurrent means starting from a point start both the vectors starting from the same point coplanar means what what do you think coplanar meaning they are in the same plane vectors are in the same plane okay they start from the same point concurrent orthogonal what do you think more than two vectors also be in the same plane correct all the vectors are coplanar then however number of vectors are there orthogonal means what orthogonal means that one vector is perpendicular of other perpendicular to other okay this is how you can say so these are the obvious definitions all right these are the obvious thing should come out naturally all right don't try to mug it up it is of no use mugging up these things all right just for your information sake what is orthogonal orthogonal means one vector is perpendicular to the other ortho means perpendicular orthogonal means have you have you guys heard of orthogonal word before have you guys heard of orthogonal vector orthogonal word before no okay no problem orthogonal means 90 degrees okay all right this is something we already discussed rn is saying he knows only orthopedic orthopedic <laughs> orthopedic is related to the bones that is different <laughs> looks like a medical term yeah 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 but i thought orthogonal is something that you guys have heard already but anyways so this we already discussed that vector there can be two kinds of analysis graphical as well as algebraic so nothing to note down here this we already no of this is the way we represent a vector okay somebody is saying if two vectors are such that head of one vector touches the tail of the other and this forms 90 degree is it still orthogonal 
what do you think everyone if two vector touch each other and they are 90 degree to each other like that are they orthogonal or not like this two vectors are are they are they orthogonal they are orthogonal they are orthogonal all right just that 90 degree should be there right now i am going to uh, basically uh, go beyond the slides little bit because slides are prepared long back i want to modify few things here okay so uh the when i say a with a bar like this it represents a vector variable all of us agree it represent a vector variable all right and and the vector variable a could be this this could be the vector a fine this is how we represent a vector a all right and like we have just discussed that if one vector is like this other vector is in opposite direction let us say two forces are there okay two forces are applied which are equal and opposite a and b they are equal and opposite we know that net force will be zero 2 newton from the left hand side 2 newton from the right hand side when you add it up it should become zero right so we already know that sum of the two vectors should give us zero so that is the reason why a should be equal to negative of b all right so basically what does it mean if this is a if i reverse the direction what will it will become everyone if this is a this is what correct minus a all right so i can just multiply negative 1 with the num with the vector and the vector changes its direction just reverses the direction all right okay that is point number 1 second is this vector variable when i write like this it has both magnitude and direction inside the same variable all right suppose i want to uh i want to extract the magnitude out of it i want to just find out the magnitude the way we represent magnitude of the vector is like this it is represented like that just the way of representation all right so if you anywhere if you see this kind of symbol it implies that it implies what it implies that i am talking about only the magnitude of a vector fine now tell me can a magnitude of a vector be negative what do you think can the magnitude of a vector be a negative quantity all right some of you saying yes some of you saying no now tell me tell me the magnitude of a vector if i draw a line if i draw an arrow magnitude is the length of an arrow magnitude of vector is length of the arrow can the length of the arrow be negative ever it cannot be right so the magnitude of the vector can never be a negative quantity okay it can never be a negative quantity understand that fine this is how we represent the magnitude now suppose suppose i want to find out a unit vector in the direction of a how you will find out we will divide vector a with its own magnitude like that 
this is a unit vector when you put a with a cap when you put like this on top of a it means that you're talking about a unit vector all right so mod of a unit vector is mod of this entire thing mod of mod of a is mod a only so mod a by mod a which is 1 so the magnitude of the unit vector is 1 and how it is done you divide vector a by its own magnitude is it clear to all of you type in okay i hope no doubts still no doubts okay now one one more thing one more thing this is about the angle write down angle between the two vectors how do we define and find out the angle between the two vectors that is what we are going to discuss fine so let us say we have a vector this this is vector a and let us say we have another vector like this vector b okay yes cost of don't worry i'll share the slides with you and uh, i'll share the video also you don't need to worry about it because previous slide i cannot go now everything will be erased fine now tell me you just leave a little bit of space and move forward okay now tell me what is the angle between a and b as far as this example concerned is the angle between a and b this theta or phi what do you think is the angle between a and b Okay, some of you are saying theta, some of you are saying phi. Okay, now, now tell me, tell me how much, how much A should be rotated to be in the direction of B. Can you answer this? Should it rotate by theta or phi? Phi, phi, right? Now answer to me how much all of you should write with me, okay? When I am writing, you also should write. How much B to be rotated to be in the direction of A, theta or phi? What I can do is that I can move a vector parallel to itself. So I can move this B like this. It still remains B only, isn't it? It will remain B only. It will not change. So it will be phi only or not. How much B should be rotated to be in the direction of A? This vector and this vector are same. I have moved the vector parallel to itself. It will be phi only, yes or no, type in. Do you all understand? B rotates by phi to be in the direction of A and A can rotate by phi to be in the direction of B. All of us agree? Everyone? Type in, type in, quick. All of you, 
why not theta okay somebody is asking why not theta now tell me uh, tell me everyone tell me if let's say this is a this is a if i rotate by theta it will be in the direction of b or in opposite direction of b what do you think it will be in the opposite direction so that is why not theta all right now tell me which one will be the logical choice of angle between the two vectors theta or phi it will be phi only right it will be phi so when we try to find out the angle between the two vectors the first step to find out the angle between the two vector is connect the two vectors connect the two vectors tail to tail tail to tail then measure the angle this angle now how you suppose vector is not connected to it tail to tail initially then what you have to do what you have to do if it is not connected to it tail to tail already then what we can do to make sure that they are connected tail to tail i can remember we can displace or move a vector parallel to itself without affecting its value remember that always remember that this is a common thing that you will be doing every time okay has anyone has any doubts till now type in no doubts okay some of you might find it repetitive you might have learned the vectors already but i am trying to go to the deep inside like the core of it why it is how it is i am not just telling you that assume angle is theta okay we are discussing about why it is theta why it is phi and stuff like that okay now once we learn now till now what we have learned we have learned that there is something called vector exists we have learned that we need it we have learned that how you write the vectors how you represent the vector right now once you have done okay just a second somebody is asking a doubt is asking can we extend the vectors is saying are you saying that can you increase the length of the vector that's what you're saying now when you extend the vector will the vector remain the same vector or not or will it change it changes magnitude changes it doesn't remain the same okay green tea there na fine green tea all right it doesn't remain the same for example two newton is applied like this in this direction two newton force you are telling me that you want to change the length you want to make it 4 newton is 4 newton in the same direction different from 2 newton or not it is different it cannot be same you cannot extend it you can move it okay take the vector from here and move it over there but you can't increase the length all right at the same time at the same time when let's say you're talking about a uh, a huge vector let's say 5 km displacement you have to show 5 km displacement will you draw 5 km long vector does it make sense 5 km long vector it doesn't make sense right you will draw a 5 cm long vector you will say that 1 cm is 1 km so you can scale it down all right but everything over there should be scaling down okay all right let's 
so what i was talking about we have learned everything about how we can represent the vector what is the angle of the ve two vectors and what is unit vector how we write it and stuff like that the next logical step you remember when we learned about the numbers you were very very little kids grade 1 grade 2 where uh, you know i i see my daughter she is in grade 3 right from the nursery and all she learned about the numbers first that 1 2 3 4 like that she remembered like that that is what we did just now after that in grade 2 onwards she started learning how you can add the numbers and that is what we are going to do now how to add the two vectors then in grade 3 she learned she is learning about how you multiply the two numbers so we are going to see after learning how to add the vectors we'll see how to multiply th with the vectors okay so next thing is how we can add the two vectors don't worry about these slides right now now i am going to debate first with you that why when we add the two vector it makes sense that this is the sum of the two vectors let us talk about that suppose there is a vector like this this is a vector vector a okay there is another vector like this this is vector b all right what is there that this pink vector that you see here this one this is actually the sum of the two vectors this is the sum of the two vectors now why it is a sum of the two vectors that we will understand by taking an example by taking displacement as an example okay so can anyone try to explain why this makes sense to have sum of the two vectors everyone you can just type in that yes i want to speak then i will tell you that yes you can speak otherwise everybody will start speaking right who want to explain that a plus b this one makes sense to have sum of the two vectors are no one no one okay saket unmute and explain so if you start from the starting point of a and move let's to let's say the, here yes or uh, you move till the end and then uh. you change the direction and then go to the end point of b so the right. total displacement will be the distance from starting to ending point so which is between 1 and 3 hence the sum is that not okay mute yourself do you all understand this he is saying that first the displacement is 1 to 2 second displacement is 2 to 3 so the sum of the displacement should be from initial to the final point so that is why this 1 to 3 this vector makes sense to be the sum of the two vectors is it clear to everyone type in now tell me now tell me whenever you add the two vectors whenever you add the two vector will you get a triangle every time will you get a triangle every time as a some are saying may not tell tell me when it is not a triangle when you will not get a triangle probably you mean to say like this this is what you mean collinear like this yes or no this is what you are saying right 
what if i tell you that it is a triangle it is a triangle and one of the angles of the triangle is 180 degree make sense or not the other two angles are zero and one angle is 180 degree so technically it is a triangle but i know that it is i mean you you don't see three sides separately all right okay hard to imagine just imagine this this is this is a triangle is it a triangle or not it's a triangle now this angle is very small how small you can make this this these two angles so that it still remains a triangle what do you think how small these two angles you can make so that it is still remaining the triangle can you answer that question you cannot answer okay you're saying exactly zero when you say exactly zero it become a straight line right otherwise you can say 0 0.001 degrees i'll say no 0 0.00001 degrees so there is no end to it right there is no end to it so i am saying that when these two angles they tend to zero you get this only so everything is a triangle only technically everything is a triangle now you are able to imagine aryan okay now since when we add the two vectors every time we get a triangle what do you think is a good name for this law the way we add the two triangle two <laughs> two vectors what should be the law good so it will it should be triangle law of addition triangle law of addition and every vector every vector must follow this law okay if if you find something having a direction and that something doesn't follow triangle of addition then that something is not a vector it is not a vector for example current all right so this is a triangle law of addition i hope makes sense do you want to do certain questions on it certain questions you want to do it let's take one or two questions on it everyone draw this diagram in your notebook last year there was a student who used to take screenshots and save in a folder as a as notes we found out after a month or so after the test happened we found out that why this guy is not getting any marks in the test and then we got to know ultimately that this guy was never making notes he was taking screenshots okay so don't do like that in case any one of you are doing it anyways these are the two vectors a and b try to add these two vectors and let me know once you're done i want to find out a plus b what it is done pande is done no no don't tell me how to do it you just type in that you are done okay is there an, anyone needing more time anybody else needing more time
All right, done. Okay, so now before adding any two vectors, what is the first step? The first step is you need to connect, write down, connect the two vectors head to tail. To connect them head to tail, all right? And then create a triangle. Once a triangle is created, the third side is the sum of the two vectors, all right? Can we connect head to head? No, you cannot connect head to head. All right, then it you can't uh, do it like that. The reason it is simple. You, we have explained like this only, right? The particle is going from one to two, then two to three. So this is a total displacement. That's how triangle is made. All right. If you connect, let's say head to head like this, will you be able to say that it went from one to two, then two to three? You can't, you will not be able to see because direction of the second vector is like this. You can't imagine like that. Is it clear or not? But it went from one to two and three to two. So you are not adding it up. Two displacements should happen one after the other, right? You went from one to two and suddenly you are at three. You can't suddenly go to three. Right, you have to travel from two onwards to the next place. All right. Now, what I'll do is that I will move B parallel to itself and I connect like this. Once I connect it, it remains B only or not? Or the vector changes? What do you think? It remains B, right? A vector can be moved parallel to itself. And then this third side, my dear friends, is the sum of the two vectors. This one, all right? This is A plus B. All of you, is it very clear? Quickly type in, quickly type in. All right, Sadhana, I'm coming to that. Hold on. Now, if you call it A plus B, then what is B plus A? Why same? Zayan is saying same. Why same? Because you are correlating with scalars. You're saying 2 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 2. So same thing should work with vectors also. Uh, are you comparing with this kind of setup? Yes or no? Comparing with this kind of setup. So what I told you, what I told you, these are the two different universes. You cannot compare what happens with the numbers. Same thing. There is no guarantee that it will happen with the vectors. Now, if you move B parallel to itself, if you're saying that is A plus B, then if you move A parallel to itself, what you can say that as rather than moving B, you're moving A now parallel to itself. You can move it like this. Now it is connecting head to tail. Yes or no? Now it is connecting head to tail. So you will get this as A plus B plus A now. This is B plus A. And as it turns out, as it turns out that these two blue lines, they are parallel, they are parallel and they are having the same length. So that is the reason why A plus B is equal to B plus A. Remember this. Clear? This is a proof of A plus B is equal to B plus A. Okay, yes, they are equal. In fact, I could have moved 
I could have moved A over there. I could have moved A like this. This is A only. This is A. And A and B are connected head to tail or not? A or B are connected head to tail. All of you agree or not? So you get a parallelogram. You get a parallelogram. So parallelogram, this is A plus B and this is also B plus A. Like that also you can say. Got it? I hope uh, things are making sense. Anybody has any doubts? Shall we take more examples? Let's take more examples. Um, this is, let's say, vector A. Okay. And this one is vector B. You have to find out what is A minus B. Try to draw this. You don't need to be perfectly right in terms of diagram, whatever something like this, you draw in your notebook and find out A minus B. Let me know once you're done. Done. Many of us are done. So if B is like that, where is minus B? Do you, all of us agree that A minus B is nothing but A minus B is nothing but A plus minus B, right? I'm adding A and minus B. All right. So if I reverse B like this, there will come minus B. All of us are agreeing. There's minus B. So this is what? This will be A minus B. Okay. Clear. I hope these things are making sense. Now tell me where is B minus A? How will we join minus A and minus B? Where is minus A? It is A and minus B. It is A and minus B, right? Can we join? Yeah, why not? But if you do it like this, minus A minus B is what you will get if you join minus A and minus B. I want A minus B. You are getting minus A minus B. B minus A, tell me once you're done. Done. Okay. So what we do is that A is this. So I will connect minus A with B. This is minus A. 
B and minus A, I have connected head to tail. So B minus A is B plus minus A. All right. This vector. This is B minus A. Now, these two lines, B minus A and A minus B, are they looking parallel or not? They are looking parallel, but the directions are opposite. You can see clearly. So, A minus B is equal to minus of B minus A. Obviously. Right? So, negative of this vector is that vector. They are parallel and equal magnitude. Sorry, anti-parallel and equal magnitude. Clear or not? Everyone type in. Okay. Sir, I connected minus A, it parallel and opposite to A. Will minus A parallel and opposite to A. I didn't get what you're saying. Can you unmute and speak? So, uh, so basically I connected, take took B as the origin, the point where A and B touches, and then I took that opposite to it as minus A. Yeah, from that, it's basically- You, you, you this, this is minus A? Yeah, no, no, this, the same thing towards the opposite side. Ah, that is correct, okay. but now what will happen? This is minus A and this is B. Are they connected head to tail? No, this, that's why I took it uh, the op to the opposite side, to the right-hand side of B. Oh, you did it like this? Yeah, yeah. Ah, that is correct only. You get the same vector only. Once you do that, see uh, what uh, he is saying. It, you unmute yourself. Sorry, mute yourself. This is what he did. He, found, he is saying that this is minus A. So B minus A would be this. There is nothing wrong with it. You get up now. This becomes a parallelogram. So this side and this side, parallel and same magnitude. So that is also B minus A only. Is it clear, R N? Not R N, Aditya. Yes, sir. Okay, the same thing you get. So now one last thing before I progress to the next uh, concept. Tell me the magnitude of the sum of two vectors. The magnitude of the sum of the two vectors can it ever be more than can it ever be more than the magnitude of sum of the magnitude of the individual vectors you understand my question right let me explain it again what i just asked <laughs> yeah repeat ah Listen here, this is, uh, this is A, this is B. Where is A plus B? A plus B is this. All of us agree that this is A plus B, right? Length of A plus B is magnitude of A plus B. Agree or not? Which is A plus B? What I'm saying is, can this ever be greater than sum of magnitude of A and B? Can this happen? That is my question. If not, why? Okay. Nobody has given a convincing answer yet. No one. Have you 
have you learned about the triangle inequality have you learned about a triangle inequality the sum of the two sides will always be greater than the third side same thing is applicable here ultimately magnitude of a plus b is what length of a plus b magnitude of a is what length of a magnitude of b is length of b and it is a triangle ultimately every time you get a triangle right so this can never happen that the third any of the side is greater than sum of the other two side it can never happen all right at max it can become equal when it becomes equal when both other two sides are i mean it is te technically a triangle but ev actually everything is happening in a straight line all right so a plus b will always be less than or equal to magnitude of a plus magnitude of b this is only for the magnitude this is something unique to a vector such kind of thing doesn't exist for numbers all right so 3 plus 2 is 5 and even if you take mod without taking mod not taking mod it is always 3 plus 2 is equal to 5 but that kind of unique thing happens with a vector when you add the two vectors whatever comes out the length of that vector will always be less than or at max equal to the length the sum of the length of the other two vectors okay remember this now let us move progress to the next thing about the vectors all right the next thing about the vector is the parallelogram law of addition but let me just browse through the uh, so to say the slides so that we sure that we are not missing anything we have learned this already you don't need to note it down don't worry we have already done this just now we have done this also reversing the vector to find out a minus b this also we did this also we did how to find the angle between the two vectors so now tell me when i write down something on the board and you you learn that way better or when i show that as a slide only like this one i don't need to write anything i can just project it that is better or when i write it down and explain it that is better okay writing down writing down so what what i'll do uh, from next time onwards is i'll use slides only for the heading and diagrams maybe whatever is written that i will write myself clear now i will come back to this by this after discussing the parallelogram law okay then the written parts be shared yeah yeah written <laughs> you why you want written parts to be shared if i start sharing the written parts you not write anything i know write down parallelogram law of addition by the way have you seen in the on the learnist on the learnist there is already there is already a written part of every uh, class that we take no that was for last year sorry about that we upload the slides only there as well Uh, what i'll do i'll share uh, all the written parts uh, at once once the chapter gets over at the end i'll upload all of it okay that may be the last years but still i mean the vector doesn't change right year on year whatever was the last year vectors we did same thing just that maybe the flow will be slightly different so that is fine right
Okay. Parallelogram law of vector addition. Now this is nothing new. It is a triangle law only, but people are calling it parallelogram law and uh, creating its importance. I do not know why, but since it is there, people are giving it importance. So we need to learn also. I mean, there's like I told you, nothing to be learned. It is same as triangle of addition, but in triangle of addition, how you connect the two vectors? Head to tail or tail to tail, head to head. How you connect? We connect head to tail head to tail, right? Whereas in parallelogram law of addition, what we do is that we connect tail to tail only. Nothing special. I'll just show you. It's a very easy and straightforward thing. Two vectors are like that. Let us say these are two vectors. Okay. This vector A, this is vector B. Now I want to add these two vectors. I do not know parallelogram law of addition. I want to use triangle of addition. So then what you do? You take this vector B, move it parallel to itself, and connect like this. Okay. When you move it parallel to itself, you know that this will be the A plus B. Yes or no? Type in. You could have moved A parallel to itself. You could have moved A parallel to itself. This one. Like this. Like this, you could have moved. When you move both A and B to find out A plus B, what get generated is, what get generated? Parallelogram. Parallelogram get generated. Okay. So using triangle law of addition only, you could have added, but when you move both A and B, parallelogram get generated, right? So going forward, whenever two vectors are given, which are connected tail to tail, like this, these two vectors are given. Will you be able, will we be able to generate parallelogram out of any two vectors that are connected tail to tail? Yes or no? Right? So I can draw parallelogram. I can draw it. Whenever you have such situation, the diagonal that starts from the joining of the two vector is the sum of this vector and that vector. Okay. This is a, this is B. The diagonal is a plus B clear. Pretty simple. All of you. And someone is saying, when to use triangle law, when to use parallelogram law. I mean, both are same only. Do you all agree? Both are same. Everyone. Do you agree? Both are same. Both are same. Now, if one diagonal is A plus B, can you tell me what is this other diagonal? This one is what? What is this diagonal? All of you. Yeah, Arun, don't worry. We are going to again discuss this. Hold on. What is this vector? This is B. 
this is a this is b connected tail to tail connected tail to tail all right now if you reverse b this will become what this becomes what if you reverse b become minus b now you can see that a and minus b are connected head to tail so this vector is a minus b all right so when you create a parallelogram out of the two vectors that are connected tail to tail one diagonal represents sum of the two vectors the other one represent the difference of the two vectors clear is it clear to all of you right clear okay now yeah yeah we will be discussing it again hold on so what now will happen is that do you think it is very easy to let's say find the sum of the is there a definition for this law nothing as such okay there is no word to word thing that you have to mug it up it is not our grade 9th and 10th okay don't worry just understand how to use it that just should be sufficient okay now uh, what will happen is that do you think it is very easy to add the two vectors by using triangle law or let's say parallelogram law and get the exact value if i already draw let's say triangle on your notebook then it is very easy okay but suppose i tell you that there is a velocity of 2 meter per second in one direction then in uh, 30 degrees south of east there is another velocity having uh, 22.5 meter per second so find out the sum of these two velocities will you be able to draw it very accurately geometrically or this method is very error prone what do you think even after you draw it you have to draw a straight line measure the length of that straight line will it be error prone or not it will it will it will come with lot of errors right you have to be very very careful it will take lot of time to draw the perfect uh, triangle perfect parallelogram find out the angle perfectly then getting the length of the sum of the two sides measure with this scale very very accurately do do you all agree or not type in right so what do we need to get rid of such uh, errors we need we need an equation geometrically things will be better to understand but when it comes to exactly finding it out you need an equation just like you remember we discuss about the calculus we discuss something similar geometrically the slope of velocity time graph is acceleration but do you think finding the slope is so easy drawing the graph finding the slope angle tan of that angle it becomes so messed up okay similarly here also graphically things look very rosy and straight forward but practically when you do it it becomes a headache all right so we need an equation to exactly exactly find out all of you keep writing with me find out the sum of two vectors sum of two vectors in terms of in terms of their magnitudes and and angle between them anyone has any doubts type in what's after we need an we need an equation <laughs> this is a short end for me this is an equation we need an equation is it not good you don't like it equation i write perpendicular like this parallel like this 
okay these are short short hands i use these are the thing that my dad used to use this kind of things when he was teaching me all right anyone has any doubts till now no doubts what i want i want an equation equation for finding what i want to find out the equation of so that i can find the length of the sum of the two vectors in terms of the length of both the vectors and the angle between the two vectors anyone has any doubts quickly type in no doubts no doubts okay so oh uh, before i get into uh, no let me do that only first then we'll go to the questions but there was a very good question that i could have done earlier but we'll do later not a problem i will not skip it don't worry so here is a situation in a school exam in a school exam they will refer it as cosine law derivation it's an important derivation for your school exam all right was it done in npa hsr this derivation that i am going to do is there any other school that is done with the vectors already okay in dps good good so you guys are already experts of the vectors must be very confident okay so let us say this is vector a and this is vector b the angle between the two vector how do you represent this angle is right right we can say it is theta you can say it is phi whatever comes in your mind you can write anything okay so in order to add them up should i create parallelogram i have to create parallelogram right when i create a parallelogram it becomes this as the sum of the two vectors okay this one this is let's say vector c which is a plus b okay so we need to find out we need to find out the length of c in terms of as a function of length of a length of b and theta okay now let me tell you this derivation has nothing to do with what do you have learned today it is a geometry so try to find out the length yourself okay if you have done it in school then also try to do it yourself here so that later you don't you never have to practice it again
Yeah, Anika, I'm not saying anything. I'm waiting for you to find out. I'm waiting for everyone to find out. Okay, now tell me, do you know any law? All of you listen to me. Do you know any law which connects the length of one side with the length of other two sides? Any law related to any triangle? Try to know already. Pythagoras theorem? Great. Great. Okay. So that is our starting point. Because here also we need to find length only, right? We want to use Pythagoras theorem here, but what is the problem? Understood, Swara. We want to use Pythagoras theorem here, but what is the problem? We cannot use it. The reason is what? What is the reason, everyone? What's not there? 90 degree triangle is not there. There is nowhere it is 90 degree. So if 90 degree is not there, what do you do? What do you do if it is not there? You create 90 degree. You create a 90 degree. So let us create the 90 degree. What you can do, you can extend this and you can drop like that. Okay. This is where 90 degrees. Now, how many right angle triangles you see here? Everyone, how many right angle triangles you see here? Two right angle triangle. Very, very good. Let us say this is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. What are the name of the triangles? Triangle one three, four, and triangle two, three, four. These are the two right angle triangles. All right. So I can use these two right angle triangles for Pythagoras theorem, right? This is the 90 degree. Okay. So although I can use it, but I cannot randomly take anything. So let us say three to four length. This length is, let's say, L1. And this length is L2. Then, can I say that the sum of the two vectors, the length of that square is equal to L1 square plus L2 square? Can I say that or not? Type in. Everyone, I can say that, right? And there's nothing wrong with it. The length of C, you already got it. Root over L1 square plus L2 square. There's nothing wrong with it. But can you leave it like this? No. Why? Because I want in terms of A vector, B vector magnitude and angle theta. This is in terms of L1 and L2. So what do you do next? You find out L1 and L2 in terms of magnitude of A, B, and angle theta. Okay. So let us try to do that. Right. 
so this angle is what everyone what do you think this angle is theta this theta very good this length is what 2 to 4 length is what 2 to 4 mod of b this is the length right so what do you think l1 should be what is l1 this is a right angle triangle right this is a right angle triangle so what is l1 in terms of b and theta can you say something correct b sin theta all of you get this or not type in perpendicular upon hypotenuse is sin theta so b hypotenuse sin theta is perpendicular which is l1 type in is this clear or not everyone all of you quick now tell me what is this length 2 to 3 length is what b cos theta right so do we all agree that length l2 is length of a plus length of b into cos theta isn't it so the length c is root over now substitute the values b sin theta whole square plus a plus b cos theta whole square okay this is what it is now quickly simplify and let me know what you get this as open the bracket simplify as much as you can and let me know okay this will be magnitude of b square sin square theta plus a square plus magnitude of b square cos square theta plus 2ab cos of theta okay so if i take b square common from this and that it will become sin square theta plus cos square theta getting it or not so ultimately you will get this length as root over a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta so this is the cosine law 
why cosine law because there is a cause inside okay so this is what it is is it clear type in quick quickly type in will be asked the derivations in your school exam definitely 110% they may ask you i think npsr's ut happened right how many derivations came in npsr one der which one came rago equation of motion calculus method or graphical one graphical okay all right t so this is the cosine law now is finding the length of is finding the length of the vector sufficient or do i need to also talk about its magnitude sorry the directions what we got is just a magnitude right should we also talk about the magnitude or not should we also talk about the direction or not definitely we need to discuss the direction also right direction in terms of what in terms of what direction in terms of same a b and theta so let us quickly talk about the direction so what is the best way to find the direction of vector c what you can do is that you can find out this angle this angle let's say phi all right is there a way to find out tan of phi can we find out what is tan of phi quickly type in tan of phi is l1 by l2 all of us agree or not perpendicular divided by the base so this is b sin theta divided by a plus b cos theta so this equation will help us to find out the tan of the angle between the some of the two vectors and a okay suppose i have to find tan of angle between some of the two vectors and b then what do you think tan of this angle will be tan of alpha would be what just you don't need to derive it quickly tell me if tan of phi is this this is what angle between c and a suppose i have to ask you angle between c and b then how will you write no 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 not like that can you quickly modify this equation this is angle between c and a c and b what will be the tan of the angle no one no one okay tan of the angle between c and a would be instead of b you have to write a so a sin theta divided by b plus a cos theta clear or not everyone you can do the derivation also but why to derive everything it is analogous type in making sense or not everyone type in type in quick all right so shall we take a break now we will meet after the break at 7 pm come back in time all of you
till uh... all right are you able to hear me everyone am i audible all right so let us continue let's continue so finally we have an equation if you tell me that there are two vectors one of this much length other is that much length angle is this much i will exactly be able to tell you that what is the length of some of the two vectors okay and we don't need to draw the graph or anything like that so let us try to analyze this cosine law little bit more what i am trying to say is this we have got that the sum of the two vectors is a square plus b square plus 2ab cos of angle between the two vectors so when i just write a i don't put a bar at the top then this a by convention let us assume that is the magnitude of vector a and similarly b and c also fine otherwise you know this is little uncomfortable to write and see also so this is the sum of the two vectors of vector a and vector b which has an angle theta so can you tell me if if we can if we can change the angle theta then at what angle the length will be minimum the sum of the two vectors length of that would be minimum at what angle what do you think everyone 90 90 what do you think i mean do we all understand that for this cos theta whenever cos theta is minimum that would be leading to the minimum value of c or not yes or no cos theta whenever it become minimum that will give us minimum value of c and what is the minimum value of cos theta minimum value of cos theta is not zero not zero minus 1 minus 1 and when that happens when theta is 180 degrees we we have learned this in trigonometry right so this is equal to root over a square plus b square minus 2ab which is root over a minus b the whole square and that gives us a minus b all right a minus b you have to make sure that square root term whatever comes out is a positive quantity so it could be a minus b or b minus a depending on which one is greater all right what do you think the maximum value it will be all of you what would be the maximum value when theta is 0 and cos theta is 1 so that will be root over a square plus b square plus 2ab so this is root over a plus b the whole square which is a plus b so the maximum value of some of the two vectors can be a plus b the minimum value of some of the two vectors can be a minus b all right i hope it makes sense now if you put theta as 90 degree what does cosine law become cos of 90 degree is what cos of 90 degree is everyone zero zero so you get c equals to root over a square plus b square or 
c square is equal to a square plus b square, which takes the shape of Pythagoras theorem. Right? So Pythagoras theorem comes from the cosine law only. Pythagoras theorem is a special case of the cosine law. Okay? Clear? All right. Okay. Let us. So this is about the how you add the two vectors geometrically. Fine. So all of you try solving this numerical. Everyone, I want to find out what is A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F. What is this equals to? Just a quick numerical here. Try to find out. Anyone? No one? Should I do it? Should I do it? Sir, one second. Okay. Someone got something, others? Okay, nobody else? All right, listen here everyone. Let us see A plus B. Look at the geometry. A plus B is where? This is A, this is B. Where is A plus B? Do you all agree that this is A plus B? Everyone? This is A plus B or not? Type in quick. Everyone, some of you looks like haven't come from the break, right? This is A plus B. Now, if this is A plus B, do we all agree that this vector is A plus B plus C? This is A plus B. You add C, this will become A plus B plus C. All of us agree? A plus B plus C is this. Now you add D. This will become A plus B plus C plus D. This vector is A, B, C, D. Agree or not? And then finally add E to it. So this vector will give us A plus B plus C plus D plus E. This one. All of us agree? Now Whatever comes out, A plus B plus C plus D plus E, do we agree that this is equal and opposite of F? Equal and opposite of F or not? This is equal to negative of F. When you take this F that side, sum of it becomes zero. 
sum of it becomes zero. Okay. All right. So this brings to us an important law. All right. Suppose this is not a hexagon. Suppose it is pentagon. Then if I arrange vector like this, will the sum of all the vector will be still zero or not? Right. So no matter how many sides a polygon has, no matter how many sides polygon has, if the vectors are arranged in the same order, cyclic order, clockwise or anti-clockwise, if you add them up, it will give you sum as zero only. All right. Okay. Yes, Aryan, see, listen, this is A plus B, head to tail. Now, this is A plus B plus C. This is A plus B plus C. This is A plus B plus C plus D, similarly. And this vector is, you add E to it. And this vector is negative of F. So that is what we did. Clear? You can watch the video also once, okay? This we already did, right? Okay. All right. So we will, we will, uh, we will take a pause here. We'll not talk about multiplication right now. I am going to tell you something more important, relevant to the physics. And then I'll talk about the multiplication. All right. So what we learned till now, what we learned till now was some of the two vectors and we learned the cosine law. Okay. Now it looks very comfortable that, okay, yeah, you can uh, add the two vectors. You have an equation and you get the answer directly. All right. Nothing wrong with it. But suppose, suppose you have multiple vectors, all right? For example, let's say you have this vector to be added to that one, then added to this one and uh, added to one more vector. Let's say this one, this vector, this vector, this vector, and uh, let's say this one. I have to add four vectors. Can such thing happen? Will there be any situations where multiple vectors you have to add, not just two? Okay. Do you think of? Can you think of any such? Tell me, tell me one such situation. You can unmute and tell. Okay, great. So one object can be applied with multiple forces. Total force will be sum of all of them. And force is a vector quantity. So you have to add them like vectors. Okay. So many a times you need to add multiple vectors like this. Many times you have to do like this. Okay. So what we know is addition of the two vectors. So if you want to use cosine law over here, then it will be a hell lot of problem. For example, first you have to add, let's say vector A with vector B. You have to understand what is the angle between A and B before adding up. Then only you can use cosine law. Then after adding A and B, Whatever comes out, let's say C, that vector, whatever comes out from A plus B, what, ve what angle it makes with the third vector, then add the third vector by using cosine law. Then whatever comes out by adding the third vector, find the angle of all of that with the fourth one, and then again use cosine law. 
do you think it is easy or it is hell lot of calculations what do you think it has lot of calculations right i have to add two vectors whatever comes out angle of that with the third one then add the third one using cosine law find the magnitude the angle of everything with the fourth one so it becomes a very repetitive kind of thing now i am going to tell you another way of adding it up so you will appreciate the power of vectors for the first time all of you listen very very carefully especially those who are learning vectors for the first time i am trying to draw the right angled triangle like this okay so basically what i am doing i am trying to create a triangle for all the vectors okay in two specific directions one is let's say along the y axis and other is along the x axis all right all right so once this triangle is completed now let me write it as a1 vector a2 vector all of you draw it with me don't wait for me to complete first i will erase as soon as i complete <laughs> this is d1 this is d2 all right can i write a plus b plus c plus d can i write it as a1 plus a2 plus b1 b2 plus c plus d1 plus d2 can you write it like this or not i am saying a is a1 plus a2 so instead of a i can write a1 plus a2 yes or no type in everyone what happened to everyone after the break everyone sleeps type in quick okay i think break should not be given right after the break something happens all right so this is written as a1 plus b1 i am just rearranging things plus d1 plus a2 b2 plus c plus d2 i can do this now tell me adding vectors like this is easy or adding like that is easy which one is easier left hand side or right hand side
Okay. All right. Left hand side is A plus B plus C plus D directly. Okay. Many of you are saying, Ajay, tell me, don't you think adding these three vectors is easy? A1, B1, and D1. Everything in the straight line. Is it easy to add them or not? Easy to add them or not? Why it is easy to add them? Because vectors are added like scalars when they are in one straight line. Understood? Similarly, right. Similarly, adding these two is easy. Yes or no? As in these yeah, are easy. Everything is a vertical line. So adding them is easy. Are you getting it? So velocity. Let's say velocity 2 meter per second here. You can add 3 meter per second velocity in the same direction. Total will be 2 plus 3. So they add like numbers. You don't need to use cosine law for them. Because everything is parallel or anti-parallel. If it is in opposite direction, subtract the magnitude. Same direction, add the magnitude. Right? Right? So this will give us, this will give us a vector which is in horizontal direction. Yes or no? This will give us a vector in the horizontal direction or not? All of you agree or not? If I keep on adding vectors in this direction, I'll get a vector in that direction only. Right? And this will give us a vector in the vertical direction. All of us agree? That will give us a vertical in vertical direction vector. This will give us horizontal direction vector. Right? So all in all, the sum of all the four vectors is nothing but sum of the two vectors which are perpendicular to each other. Now, how you add the two vectors perpendicular to each other? One vector is this, other one is like that. This you can say is V, this you can say is H. Now, if the best thing is, if you create a parallelogram, if you create a parallelogram, the sum of the two vectors, which is this, resultant, the length is root over this length is square plus that length is square because this is also V. Do you all agree? Type in quick. Magnitude of the resultant is root over h square plus v square. Now tell me, cosine law is easy or this one is easy when you add the four vectors? If you have any doubts, you can type in, you can speak also, quickly do that. This is lot easier. This is lot easier. Now, if this is lot easier, let us try to derive the cosine law by using what we have just done. Okay. And by the way, whatever we have just done is called taking components. Have you ever heard of taking components before? Components word, have you have ever heard? Ever, ever, have you heard about it? Components? All right. Yes, coming to that. Hold on, hold on, coming to that. Well, what I did before adding A with B, I have broken A into A1 and A2. So A1 and A2 are components of A. Before adding B, I have broken B into B1 plus B2. So B1 and B2 are components of B. All right. Similarly, C1, C is already in one specific direction. You don't need to take component. And D, when you add D1 and D2, D1 plus D2, D1 and D2 are the components of D. Getting it, all of you? 
you have to type in quickly otherwise i get to know that i i will even slow it down i think none of you are understanding then if not everybody is replying understand or not okay now it means that what it means it means that when you are adding the two or three vectors breaking the vector first into its component and adding them that is easier but have you ever done it with vector with numbers let's say 3 plus 5 have you ever written 3 as its component like 2 plus 1 and 5 as 4 plus 1 and then add have you ever done such things this is meaningless with numbers doesn't help us in any which way but it helps a lot with vectors when you break vector a into its component b into its component d into its component then it helps us a lot okay now we will take an example of just two vectors and i will use all of this to tell you how exactly we can find the sum of the two vectors all right so someone was asking how to find out the value of a1 and a2 that also i'll answer while discussing that itself fine so let's say this is a derivation of cosine law by using components this is a this is b all of you just keep noting it down i am not asking you to do anything just note down all right this is angle theta now i have to add these two vectors i don't know anything about the cosine law let us say then what i'll do is that i will the first step would be i will draw two perpendicular lines x and y that is your step number 1 step number 1 is finding out which direction is your x axis and which direction is your y axis you can take any direction as x perpendicular to that any direction can be y all right and i prefer to take everything in the plane of the diagram so i have taken x this way y that way fine now what i will do what i'll do is that i will break a into its components because b is already along the x axis i don't need to break the b i will break a so a will be this vector plus that vector fine this plus that so adding a plus b is as good as it is as good as adding vector b this is b plus adding the component of a this way and component of a that way do you all agree adding two vectors a and b is as good as adding three vectors b a1 and a2 all of you type in make sense or not right now tell me now tell me what what i'll add first i'll first add b and a1 and then i'll add a2 so what is a1 length of a1 is what 
Okay, someone is saying a one a part of b. Why are you saying a one is a part of b? A one is a different vector. A one is component of a. I have just drawn on top of b, but doesn't make it a part of b. B is a different vector. So a one is what? What is a one? If this is ninety degree, the length of this vector, let's say a. So what is this length? Length of a one is what? Everyone, won't it be a cos theta? Type in, and length of that would be a sin theta or not? Everyone, magnitude of a two is a sin theta. Magnitude of a one is a cos theta. All right. So I will first add up these two vectors. I'll add these two. So when I add these two, I'll get one big vector this way, whose magnitude will be b plus a cos theta. All right, and I this vector, this one. Would be a sine theta. All right. Some of these two vectors you can find out by getting the length of this. Length of that is root over this square plus that square, which will lead you to the cosine law only. All of you type in. Makes sense or not? This is your R. R would be by using Pythagoras theorem root over a sine theta the whole square plus b plus a cos theta whole square, which will give us cosine law. Okay, all right. So when we add the two vectors, three vectors, four vectors, taking components always help us. now you will appreciate more about the components when you solve numericals right that we will be doing as we progress through the physics chapters one after the other you will see that we will be taking components many many times all right now i am going to tell you some things which are very very essential so focus everyone if you have a vector like this okay this is a vector here is a vector vector a i want to find out its component its component in the x direction and in the y direction all right horizontal and vertical direction so can you tell me what is the length of the component of a which is already vertical in the horizontal direction try finding it out okay let us say let us say it is having a component in the x direction this much all right now if this is the x direction component and you try to complete a triangle by creating a y component will it will the triangle be ever be completed 
If this is your x component, and when you draw the y component, will triangle be completed? The only way, only way theoretically you can complete a triangle is doing what? Is doing what? Let's say this is a one, and this is a two. Only way the triangle can be thought to be completed if a one is equal to null vector. So length of a one should be zero. Okay, clear. I hope this is clear. Now comes the biggest statement, which will be very very powerful when you do the physics numerical. So everyone, put a star mark like this, and write down a vector will have no components or no component. Perpendicular to itself. What does this mean? This means that a vector cannot cannot affect anything which is perpendicular to itself. now i'll give you certain examples so that it will be even more clearer to you so everyone write down force in x axis as per the statement above this force can it create acceleration in the y direction can never create acceleration in y direction why because this force has no component in the y direction this force cannot affect anything in the y direction all right similarly the acceleration in the y direction can never change velocity in the x direction that is the property of a vector a vector cannot affect anything perpendicular to itself because it has no component in that direction all right so these are just example example number 1 example number 2 there can be millions of such examples now all of you can you type in whether the sum of the finding the sum of the two vectors the concept of that is absolutely clear yes or no saget is saying no then is saying yes <laughs> all of you type in till now everything is clear this is all about this was all about the how we add the vectors now we will learn about till when is the class by the way till 8:15 right till 8:15 okay 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 so probably we will be done with the multiplication of the vectors and uh, not entire vector can be done today probably next class we need to little bit extend it okay anyways so now we will talk about we will talk about how multiplication with the vectors is done all right so everyone write down multiplication of vectors multiplication of vectors so tell me 
can i multiply scalar with a vector can it be done can i multiply scalar quantity with vector those who are saying yes give me some example where scalar quantity is multiplied with a vector no that is not correct equation of motion when you force equal to ma when you write everyone when you write force is equal to mass times acceleration everyone mass is a scalar quantity or not and acceleration is a vector quantity so there is a multiplication yes or no is it clear vishnu there can be so many examples like somebody said v is equal to u plus at you are multiplying acceleration with time or not time is a scalar quantity this is a vector equation by the way okay acha can you tell me is it possible to add scalar with a vector is it possible to add scalar to the vector or that doesn't mean anything everyone correct it does not mean anything you can never ever add a scalar with a vector it doesn't mean anything all right so if we multiply scalar with a vector will we get a scalar quantity or a vector quantity what do you think we will get a vector quantity only so write down outcome is a vector okay let's say the scalar is lambda if a scalar is lambda and the vector is a okay so the scalar times vector lambda a this thing tell me will the direction remain same at least direction remain same type in yes or no when you multiply scalar with a vector the direction will remain same or not my dear friends everyone i mean just answer with right or wrong doesn't matter participate participation is important it remain same or not okay now what if what if lambda is less than 0 if it is lambda is a negative quantity will the direction change or remain same let's say lambda is minus 1 is minus 1 is a scalar quantity when you multiply minus 1 with a vector direction changes or not changes or not a become minus a are you telling me some of you a and minus a the direction is same it will become in opposite direction right when you multiply negative scalar the vector switches to the opposite direction okay somebody is saying how can a scalar quantity be negative do you do anyone know any quantity that is negative scalar quantity quickly any quantity that is negative which is scalar everyone charge charge can be negative displacement is a vector quantity charge is a scalar quantity charge be negative or not charge can be negative energy can also be negative length cannot be negative 
does that answer your question whether the scalar quantity be negative right so it can be negative there are so many examples so lambda less than 0 what will happen to the direction direction reverses 180 degree and my dear friends if lambda is equal to 0 what happens to the direction what will happen to the direction direction vanishes it becomes a null vector only if lambda is greater than 0 the direction is same okay this is about the direction all right now what about the magnitude when we find the magnitude of lambda times a will magnitude will be greater than a or not magnitude of lambda times a lambda times a is a vector so direction can reverse here and there whatever can happen but what will happen to the magnitude i'm asking will magnitude change and if it changes will it increase decrease remain same what will happen to the magnitude all of you magnitude will increase how many of you say that Okay, Saket is saying lambda is greater than 1, then it will increase. If lambda is equal to minus 2, will magnitude increase or not? If lambda is minus 2. Everyone, I am asking you, if lambda is minus 2, the vector become minus 2a. So, minus 2a, the magnitude of minus 2a is more than the magnitude of a or less than magnitude okay okay that's that all right so now you know uh, i ask you every time some trick question so lambda times a is basically magnitude of lambda can magnitude be negative it can never be negative magnitude of a vector so you have to take mod of the lambda also all right so, if lambda is greater than 1 or lambda is less than minus 1, the magnitude will increase always. But if lambda is 0, magnitude is 0. That sounds straightforward. Now, if lambda is between minus 1 and 1, and not equal to zero. What will happen to the magnitude? If let's say lambda is 0.5, magnitude increases, decreases, or becomes zero. Decreases, magnitude goes down. So this is what happens. Does that answer all of your questions? Anyone has any concern here? Note it down quickly. Everyone note it down. All right. So shall we move? Shall we move? Last one, take an example. Let's say lambda is equal to 0 0.2. Don't you think when you multiply 0 0.2 with magnitude of A, magnitude will go down? Yes or no? So that's what. Between minus 1 and plus 1, if you multiply a number with A, the, it will decrease the magnitude. Right? Now we are done with multiplication of a scalar 
with a vector all right now can a vector be multiplied with another vector what do you think can a vector quantity be multiplied with another vector quantity give me some example some examples mm -hmm. okay good somebody has written what we got v square equal to u square plus 2 as very good actually the a and s are these vectors so there is a multiplication of acceleration and displacement good then you have work done do you remember this work done is a multiplication of force and displacement two vectors yes or no right do you remember any other equation do you remember any other equation tell me no other equation all right so there is going to be many equations that you will see where uh, one vector is multiplied with another vector when you say momentum is m into v m is a scalar quantity my dear friend we are looking for vector multiplied with another vector right so there are equations like torque is equal to r multiplied with another vector this like that there are many such equations actually but at least one such equation you should know this one and one such this one and look at this two vectors are multiplied what comes out what is r forget about that r is a just a vector all right we'll learn about it detail but there is such equation all right you can see two vectors are multiplied what are you getting are you getting a scalar quantity or a vector quantity what is the work done work done is a scalar quantity or a vector quantity everyone it's a scalar quantity scalar quantity right two vectors are multiplied and you're getting a scalar quantity here you can see that two vectors are multiplied what are you getting a scalar quantity or a vector quantity vector quantity right so scalars will be multiplied only in one way but vector multiplies in three ways one the way it multiplies with another scalar quantity a vector multiplied with a scalar quantity that two ways in which a vector can be multiplied with another vector one will lead to a scalar quantity other will lead to a vector quantity okay so this is what it is please note it down dot product is a name of the multiplication of a vector with another vector that leads to a scalar quantity cross product is a name that leads to a vector quantity all right all of you written all right i'll go to the next dot product let us say i have to multiply a vector with another vector and outcome is a scalar quantity then dot product the name is also called as scalar product the two names to it 
it is written like this a vector put a big dot between a and b this is how it is written dot product all right the outcome is magnitude of a into magnitude of b into cos of angle between a and b clear to all of you now you may ask from where the cos theta came why not tan theta why not sec theta why not cos square theta for that i don't have any answer because this is the way people have assumed it to be right a dot b is defined it is defined defined means it is assumed it is assumed to be magnitude of a into magnitude of b into cos theta all right now why this is a logical choice i can explain that to you but this is the formula for the dot product all right do anyone has any concern here in this definition type in any issues no all right so let me let me tell you why it is good to write a dot b as a into b cos theta all right so let us try to understand what is this what is this b cos theta why at all trigonometric function very good question let us see that all right everyone so this is a vector this is b vector and this is theta now b cos theta where do you see b cos theta if you drop a perpendicular and say that b is the sum of these two vectors the length of this vector is what the below one is what this is b1 vector this is b2 vector so magnitude of b1 is what this is 90 degree magnitude of b1 is b cos theta all of us agree or not type in everyone right now this b cos theta b cos theta can i say it is the component component of b in the direction of a i can say that right so what i am doing i am multiplying a with component of b in the direction of a so it means something all right similarly same diagram if i take here this this is b and this is a this is theta okay can you can you geometrically find out where is a cos theta because this thing can be written as b into a cos theta as well can you find out where is a cos theta in the diagram just like we did from b cos theta everyone let me know once you're done
right? So let us see. If I extend B like this and drop a perpendicular on B, this is 90 degree, okay? Can you tell me how much is this length from here to here? This length is what? This length is A cos theta or not? Magnitude of A into cos theta? Type in all of you. A can be written like this and that. What is A cos theta? A cos theta is nothing but, comp A can be written as this vector plus that vector, right? So A cos theta is a component of A in the direction of B, okay? So I'll write uh, a cos theta component of a in the direction of b. So you can thought of, or sorry, you can think of dot product as multiplication of the magnitude of one vector with component of another vector in the direction of the first vector. So you can say it is A into B cos theta or B into A cos theta, fine? So I hope you understand why it is logically that, fine? Now, do you remember that the work done is multiplication of force with displacement in the direction of force? Do you all? Remember that or not? Multiplication of force into displacement in the direction of force. That is the work done. It is not just force into displacement. Okay, that might not have been covered to you because the, you dealt with only the straightforward cases in grade nine, but that is fine. In grade 11, we will learn that in detail, all right? So the formula for the work done, my dear friends, is force dot product with displacement. It is F into S into cos of theta, all right? Okay, so this is called the dot product. I hope this makes sense to everyone. Type in, is this clear, everyone? All right, let me show you, let me show you the cross product now. You don't need to worry about this. We have already written enough about the dot product, okay? This also we have written, all right? Same thing is in the slides. You only told me that don't show the slides. So I am writing everything down. Now comes a cross product. Now any guesses, if A dot B is A into B into cos theta, A cross B will be what? Just take a wild guess. Very good. Very good. Now, haven't we learned that when we use the cross product, we should get a vector as the outcome? Yes or no? We should get a vector as an outcome? Right? 
right? So when you say a into b into sine theta, is that a vector or a scalar? Is that a vector or a scalar? You are telling a scalar thing, right? But then that is correct only. What you are telling is the magnitude of the cross product. Okay, so cross product or the vector product. Okay, let's say A cross B. This is how you write the cross product. Okay, magnitude of A cross B is equal to magnitude of A into magnitude of B into sine of angle between A and B. Okay, clear? Now, how can you think it as if A into multiplied by what? Component of B in which direction? Component of B in which direction? Everyone, in the direction perpendicular to A, in the direction perpendicular to A, that is what A cross B magnitude is. In the direction of A, it is B cos theta. Perpendicular to A is B sin theta. All right. So this is A into component of B perpendicular to A. Okay. Or you can say B into component of A perpendicular to B. One and the same thing. All right. But then this is about the magnitude of the cross product. What about the direction? It is not a scalar quantity. It is a vector quantity. We found out the magnitude of the vector only. Let us talk about the direction of the vector. Clear? Now, everyone, this is A, this is B. All right. Direction of the cross product is given to B. Write down perpendicular to both. A and B or perpendicular to the plane containing both A and B. Okay. It should be perpendicular to A and B. So A and B together will be in a plane. So right now in which plane A and B are in? Everyone, in which plane A and B are in? It is a plane of the screen. So perpendicular to the plane of the screen, which direction do you think it is? How many directions are perpendicular to the plane of the screen? One or two? There are two directions. One coming out of the screen, other coming into the screen. Two directions are there. All of us agree, right? So there is an ambiguity. We, even though we define it to be, even though we have defined it to be perpendicular to the plane, 
but then also there are two directions to pick you have to uniquely pick one direction and whatever you pick should be picked by other also it should not be that you create a rule by that rule you get one direction other person gets the other direction so it will create an ambiguity to remove that ambiguity to remove that ambiguity we will talk about a rule which we can use to uniquely assign a direction either inwards into the screen or coming out of the screen so this is the most important thing for today's class that i am talking about listen to it very very carefully this will ease up your life like anything okay you will be able to uh, proceed with cross product very very easily because the only thing where students make most of the mistake is finding the directions all right so i want to find direction of a cross b let us say so everyone take out your right hand even though you are lefty take your right hand okay all of you you're done take out your right hand everyone align in the direction of the first vector in the direction of the first vector you align in the direction of a it will be like this okay like this you align all of you align now fold towards the second vector you cannot fold like that right it should be natural fold so like this align in the first vector direction go towards the second one thumb is telling you inward or outward thumb is telling you inward or outward 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 so a cross b is outwards a cross b now tell me b cross a which direction b cross a will be same thing align in the direction of the first vector now first vector is b it is not a b cross a which direction it is everyone align in the direction of b fold towards a inwards or outwards now it will be inwards everyone agrees to it or not you align it towards b fold towards a it will be inwards so such a simple rule it is and i have seen students complicate it they use like this okay this is first vector is second vector is third vector so like this they keep on doing like this okay so don't do like that you just align the first direction go towards the other one so it will be b cross a now do you all agree that a cross b and b cross a are in opposite directions right and they are equal in magnitude so can i say that a cross b is equal to minus of b cross a can i say that or not equal in opposite vectors type in can i explain outer and inward listen to it i'll take one example and explain but right now you write it down whatever is written one last example i'll take before leaving you how many are attending the kvpy classes okay some of you are attending okay i hope it is going on very well and yeah it is hectic but then what to do you have to complete the curriculum right you have to complete the curriculum so we will not tell you something which is not true we will not tell you that things are very easy even though they are not so whatever they are however they are you have to do it if we want to aim at something right let us take one final example everybody everyone one final example then i will leave you for the day somebody else will start teaching you after 15 minutes hold on so let us say this is a situation this is a vector this is b vector tell me the direction of a cross b where it will be
इनवर्ड और आउटवर्ड ए क्रॉस बी करेक्ट अदर्स इनवर्ड्स इट विल बी इनवर्ड्स अलाइन योर हैंड इन डायरेक्शन ऑफ ए गो टूवर्ड्स बी अलाइन डायरेक्शन ऑफ ए गो टूवर्ड्स बी ऑल राइट ओके फाइन मेनी टाइम्स यू विल सी वेक्टर्स लाइक दिस दे आर अरेंज लाइक दैट but first you have to connect them tail to tail before finding out direction of cross product move this vector parallel to itself connect it tail to tail and then use this law don't use this law for head to tail connection so this is this a this is b okay so put it like this and then align the direction of a go towards b a cross b now is outwards all right all right friends so that's it from my side we will now end this session and we'll continue with the vectors in the next class and complete it little bit is remaining all right that's it from my side bye for now thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir bye bye